When many people think of Matthew's Gospel, they think of the Great Commission, and rightly so. That is how the, the book of Matthew ends. This Great Commission that Jesus calls His people, the resurrected Lord says to His people, Now go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them all that I've commanded. This is how you make disciples. This is the mission of the church. But again, it's very important that we remember that this is the end of the story in Matthew's Gospel, or maybe in another sense, the beginning of another story. What came before that? Why does he give this great commission? We often think of that as the only commission, but it's really not. If we really want to understand the great commission and its overall biblical theological uh, structure and how it relates to scripture, we really need to go back to Genesis. Because in Genesis chapter 12, there's a very wonderful thing that takes place there. God calls a pagan worshiper out of the land of Ur, his name is Abram, and he makes a promise, a covenant promise to this man named Abram who would become Abraham, the father of Israel in so many ways. And he says, amongst other things, he says to Abram, through you and in you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Now we don't know in Genesis 12 what all that means, what all that entails, but as scripture unfolds, verse by verse, passage by passage, and book by book, we get a better picture of that. We have a clearer picture of that as revelation progresses throughout the Old Testament. And, and one of the things that we see there is that God is raising up not only individuals like Abraham, but ultimately he will raise up a nation through Abraham's loins. He will raise up Jacob who will become the father of the nation and tribes and they are given a commission as well. And that is to draw all the nations to Israel to be the mouthpiece for God, to be a, a spokesman for God, to say, look how great our God is. And as we know the story, Israel often forgets that. Israel often fails. And the prophets step in and they say, wait a minute, you have forgotten your God. You have forgotten your commission. You are to be a light to the nations, even to the Gentiles. Isaiah has a lot to say to the Gentiles. And he says, everyone come to this God. Come without price. Come without cost. You, you are to be drawn near to the one true God, the God Yahweh, the one true God of all creation. But Israel doesn't fulfill that task. And then after that, there's 400 years of silence. And then Matthew breaks that silence. And he says, the Messiah is now on the scene. And one of the first things that we learn about this Messiah in Matthew's gospel is in Matthew chapter 10, which is the second discourse, the second teaching section in Matthew's gospel. And in Matthew chapter 10, he does something very interesting. He commissions we might call it a great commission, great commission number one. He commissions his disciples to go into the world, but he puts stipulations on that commission. And he says, do not go into the way of the Gentiles. Do not enter any city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus is wanting to demonstrate to Israel that their commission is now being picked back up and it is being repeated. And in fact, in some ways, not completely, but in some ways it's being fulfilled in this Messiah. This message has not been forgotten. That through Israel and through their Messiah, God's plan is still to bless all the nations through belief in the Son of God, through the Messiah, who is Jesus. And so he gives a commission to them and they are to go and he tells them some very bad news that there will be people who will reject you. There will be people who will throw you out. There will be people who will scorn your message. They will hate you, which is a very familiar message in Israel's history. The prophets have heard that before. But Jesus says, this is what you are to do. And he does this by way of announcement, also by way of rebuke to the nation of Israel. And then we fast forward all the way to the end of Matthew's gospel in Matthew chapter 28. And now that commission is not only given to Israel, it's now expanded and he calls his disciples, the resurrected Lord calls the disciples and his followers to himself. And he says, now expanding Matthew chapter 10, he says, not only go to Israel, where does he say? He says, go into all the world, make disciples of all the nations, teach everyone, baptize everyone, teach everyone all that I've commanded you. This is the mission of Jesus' disciples. This becomes, as we will see also in the book of Acts, the mission of the church. And friends, today this is still our mission to go into all the world, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to see disciples baptized, to de see disciples taught the Word of God. That is the message, that is the mission of Jesus, and that is our mission today.